Hi, Tim Sales here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about where did network marketing come from? All right, it's, it has an origin. And I'll tell you a little brief background on this. Uh, so I was in a network marketing company and uh, there were attorney generals who claimed that we were a pyramid scheme. Now, I was in the Navy Special Operations, and so I'm not somebody who defects. I'm not going to, like, run just because there's a challenge. But I didn't know if I should run because I really didn't know what the company was all about. And, um, and so it caused me probably one of the greatest things that ever happened because it challenged me to go and do research and really study and so that is what I did. And so um, I remember when I was going through it, uh, me and a Harvard, pro uh, not a Harvard professor, he was a, a professor who was trained at Harvard. Okay, so he, Harvard PhD. And, uh, and so he and I studied this to try to figure this out. And, uh, and I want to give you just, and it, and, and it led me into where did it originate from? So just thought this would be interesting. All right. So I know you can't read this, but uh, I have to read it to you, okay? And so this is the direct sales industry, and, uh, and it's been around since like 1886. Um, I think it was the first one, Avon. Uh, they didn't call themselves Avon at the time. They called themselves the California Perfume Company, all right? Now, this little summary is written by the Department of... Uh, History at the University of Delaware, all right? And so I just want to read this to you. So you notice that it says here, now you are in business for yourself. The independent contractors of the California Perfume Company, 1886 to 1938. And it was in 38 where they converted to being Avon. Okay, so few business historians think about independent contractors like Avon ladies and fuller brush men as business owners, but every Avon lady actually owns her business. Tiny in scale, no capital outlay, and operated with occasional labor. Avon ladies and fuller brush men occupy a unique economic and entrepreneurial niche. They embody corporate identity but work within individual household units. The direct sell selling industry doesn't fit the standard model of business as manufacturing and distribution enterprises. The history of the California Perfume Company invites us to question our conventional wisdom about how business is organized, and it contributes to business history by dis describing an alternative strategy for managing distribution. All right. I know that was a lot to just listen to and read, but I couldn't have stated that better. All right. Like, in other words, it was then and now very, it just said it so well. Okay. Because, yeah, it doesn't agree with the standard, but it is very viable. All right. It moves a lot of sales volume. Okay. Um, and I got a kick out of this. I found an ad and it said, wanted agent to take agency for California perfume company products. Experience not required or necessary. Phone number 418R. Wasn't a lot of phones then. <laughs> All right. So, um, so yeah, they had 10,000 saleswomen in 1906. That's a lot of salespeople back then. All right. Um, out of this company, some people came over and started another company called um, Fuller, uh, Fuller, Fuller Brushes. What they did is they made cleaning brushes uh, for paneling, for carpet, for inside, you know, like a lot of different brushes. And they were really, really good products. And so that was the, uh, the Fuller man. Um, there were a lot of them. Okay. And then out of that company yielded another company called Stanley Home Products. And they ended up merging with Tupperware. And from that, they pulled, Tupperware pulled all their products off of the regular channels because they were getting some, such better sales inside of the direct sales space. Okay. And so, um, yeah, so there's another ad for that, very similar. And the ad that I answered that got me into network marketing, it said no experience required. And it was the only reason. And it also said will train. Okay, so now where did network marketing come into this, the play? 
All right, and so 1945, California Vitamin Corporation, I found that interesting because if you look at the, uh, the name of this, California Perfume Company, neither one of the companies were from California. I think it was just a cool thing to name things. Um, and so I think that this person probably got that idea, but I don't know that. Anyway, so uh, 1945, California Vitamin Company created the first documented compensation that paid on more than one level. All right. Distributors bought supplies at 35% discount. To encourage distributors to sell more, companies gave 25% bonus on total sales. After the distributor got 25 customers, he was allowed to become a direct distributor, which meant that he could find others who wanted to sell the products, and then they would buy their products from him or her. Okay, so once you got 25, then, then you were able to get reps. As an incentive to train his distributors, the company um, gave a 2% commission once you had amassed 150 customers. Okay, so I uh, drew out a little scale of this. So here's the network marketing company. They have manufacturing expenses, they have employee expenses, they have advertising expenses. And so, you, let's say this is you, you got 25 customers and you get a, you get a, um, a 25% discount, okay? And then when you got reps, other representatives, and uh, then you got a 2% bonus on their sales. And so that was the first documented multi-level compensation, all right? So you get 35% discount, all of these right here, those are customers. You get 25 of them. And so you're going to make, you know, let's say the, the customer pays 135, you paid 100, so you're going to make $35 profit. Okay. After 25 customers, you're then able to find others to sell. And for the purpose over here, as an incentive to train his distributors well, okay, he gets 2% override or she gets 2% override. Right. So it's very, very logical. Why is that very, very logical? Because otherwise, the California Vitamin Company is going to have to have a department to recruit salespeople. And who knows better how to train the sales reps than a person who's getting customers already? You see, that's why it's very, very logical to give a 2% bonus. All right, so I, um, and then compensation plans after that, they begin to see, okay, so does this one right here eventually break away from this person or does, you know, when this person here is in the center of that circle and then customers all around it. In other words, how deep do they pay? That is where it then changed and it began to, con it, it, it didn't change. It just continued to grow with better and better compensation because what people were finding, like what companies were realizing was that, man, people would much rather do this than be in a traditional company where they were getting just a salary to sell, okay? So, and then it was also very effective for people who like moms or something like that. And so um, Fuller Brush created the whole identity around that it could be a profession for men. Over here in Avon, it was mostly women, but then the Fuller men came out. So, uh, so anyway, that's kind of, that's how it started. And, uh, and it was a long, long time ago. That's the basis of it. And so I just thought it would be helpful as you think about network marketing to get a real good background on where did it originate? Like, how did it start? Okay, so let me know what you think about this. Thank you.